Well, he didn't die because of his shoes or some stupid commercial, and you know it. Well, they quoted the ad, Amelia. The kid was a gangbanger. Oh, so he deserves to die? Can you cut that out? Damn, I'm on your side. Look, I know you feel this guilt, this conflict. Somehow you got it into your head that because you grew up with money and education, you're not black enough. But getting yourself shot doesn't make you black. It makes you stupid. Oh, so he was stupid, too. You see this? You talk about how offended you are at this commercial. It's portrayal of black ghetto youth as aspirational, and yet you defend the lifestyle. It's just like when we were kids and you were always playing ball with those gangsters from the neighborhood. You over... mean my friends? Friends? You'd come home crying every time. All the crap they'd give you. Call you rich boy, call you white, honky, make fun of how you dressed, how you talked, and next day, sure enough, you'd go back for more. Don't do that, all right, Amelia? Don't analyze me like you do your white people. That's the difference between us, Thomas. They're not white people to me. They're people with problems. Oh, and you think they just see you as their doctor. How else would they see me, Thomas? No, see? They go home and they say, Jill, I'm seeing a new therapist, and you know what? She's black. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? And she's so smart and articulate, you almost don't even recognize it. <laughs> Does everything have to be so heavy? Is that what talking about black is? Mining for the diabolical subtext? Stereotypical conversations about the white man keeping us down? You don't seem down, Thomas. You know what? I'm gonna find him, Em. The guy who wrote that ad, I'm gonna find his black ass. Thomas, what makes you think he's black? No, I'm not kidding. I'm gonna walk up to him at that 16 party this weekend. I'm gonna take him outside, and I'm gonna show his ass what's up now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.